Welcome to PR Envision. I am Ronnie J. The PR Envision brand is a platform for all public relations majors and professionals to come together, teach, and learn from each other. The first segment of PR Envision is entitled That's Not True, where we will be dispelling the myths of public relations. One of my guests for today is Eric Dobson. Eric, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, first off, Lonnie, I want to say thank you for having me on your show. It's an honor to be here. You're such a great host, and I always love doing projects with you. Um, my name is Eric Donaldson, as you heard. I'm a senior public relations and advertising major here at Delaware State University. I transferred in last spring, um, where I attended Cal U also as a public relations major. Um, I joined Pressa. It's been a great experience, both uh, joining at my last university and transferring over here, just collaborating on different ideas and just getting a new perspective overall. Um, it's been a great road so far, so I'm excited. Young PR professionals make making. That's what I like to say. So, dispelling public relations myths. Yes. There is a lot of, you know, talk and myths about public relations that isn't true. Definitely, definitely. So, what my executive producer and I did is research some myths. And now we're going to put it into them. Not. Interesting. So, myth number one, a company will become famous overnight from public relations. Wow. Definitely not the case. Um, PR is a journey. You know, you have to, there's a lot of planning that goes into PR before you even take that first step to jump out and strategize who you're going to start talking to to make the connections within that that plan. That, uh, it's, it's a branching web, you know, and, and you're constantly repairing, just like right. any spider's web, you know. Life is going to throw you things. That's why PR is there. We handle so much. So it's, to say it happens overnight, that's impossible because there's not even one person that could handle everything. Everything, because it's a lot. And it's I don't so think people much. understand that. Um, a lot of people put public relations under one branch where it's definitely a team effort. There's so many different faucets of public relations. Um one thing I like to say about PR, you know, making someone famous overnight is that a lot of PR campaigns that people see, they wouldn't even know that they had been planned month, months ahead of time. Um you have to sit down at the drawing board. You have to figure out what tactics you're gonna use with media outlets you're going to hit because of your target audience. And that varies depending on the project, depending on the person, depending on who you're going to be working with. Everyone's not going to have the same preference. Exactly. So, you know, there's a lot of research that goes with it, that's involved with it. Um, study, you know, groups. Uh, Definitely here at the collegiate level, of, you, can't, you can't move forward successfully in the direction of PR without at least about that week of, of research alone. You gotta, you gotta know where you've been to know how you're gonna grow. And that is, takes me to the next one. So, myth number two is that um, whining and dining means writing. That's funny. <laughs> oh, I thought that one very funny. When I was how many dinners have you been on? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there there's certain moments that are rewarding within the field, don't get me wrong. Right. But those are long term rewards. That's after so much hard work. You have to be at quite an executive level to be on any type of dining experience and no one starts out at the top in this business. You're gonna have to work. You wanna have to go get some coffee. You're gonna Yeah, that's that's the one. <laughs> right, right. press releases. This is uh you know, you not you're not gonna start start off at the top. Um, I also believe that with this myth, um, a lot of people think that you can just get, um, you know, your client placed somewhere by, you know, buying someone something or, you know, taking them out to dinner. That they don't always have to, you know, write a media alert or a press release or, you know, take those extra steps. Um, you can't always bribe someone. You know, sometimes, you know, 
the industry goes like that. But if you want to do it the right way and make the right name for yourself. You better um, have those core skills. Right. And, you know, a lot of people don't have those skills. They just think, um, oh, bubble collections is just a bit plain. First of all, <laughs> there's not a single career within public relations where you're not going to do some writing. So if you don't have the basics down in that category, if you're not familiar with the APA, how to compose a press release versus, or a media release, because mm -hmm. you know we're transitioning, a media release versus uh, print and TV formats, or, you know, there's so much specifics to writing alone within the industry. You can't even write a <laughs> PSA. You know, you have to, it's a whole lot of copy. You have to know which copy goes with which media outlet. You know, so it's more than just going to dinner, <laughs> having a nice clothes. Nice. It would be very nice. But Listen, if somebody was paying me to just go to dinner, I probably wouldn't be in college right now. <laughs> so, myth number three. The next myth is, oh Jesus, publicity is all about luck. There's some timing, but it's definitely not about luck. You would be lucky if you hit the right time. Right. <laughs> no, that's, that's luck. You because there's be. planning. Mm -hmm. There's planning. There's heavy planning involved in that. I feel like this one, this myth goes right back to the, you know, overnight thing. Where yeah. luck is basically an overnight thing, you know. You never know when you can get lucky, per se. Whereas if overnight, it's just, it happens right there. Luck can just happen right there. I think the biggest myth with PR is, is that they try to put it in a box. It's tried to be boxed in and labeled when there's so many different facets, as we, as we said earlier, right. of what goes into PR. You may have a desire to do something specifically like media planning and it falls under. Mm -hmm. PR. It's an umbrella. Right. You know? There's many raindrops coming off of that umbrella. Definitely. That, you know, in a sense, it never stops. And, you know, the best thing you could do merging into this industry is be sharp on the most basic skills. You start with your writing. And when you become a good writer, you start making connections and you show your work to people. They register to them that you're worth something and then they want to see value in you and they'll refer you and that opens up your doors with connections. So now you're writing well and you're making connections. And with those connections, you can start planning to time mm -hmm. out your events and where you're going to go with those events. It's a process. I mean, you can't just jump to the top. <laughs> no, we can't. I wish I really could. <laughs> but, you know, maybe 15 years down the road from now and that's not, you know, far fresh within our field. I can be hitting some dinners. I can be <laughs> Hold my glasses up. Okay, so... Another myth, myth number four, is that PR drives sales. A lot of people look at public relations and believe that it's marketing. When the two have similar, similar, you know. Effective branding strategies would have those two things aligned. Right. But they're very different, different. in how they handle it. Public relations is as it sounds the relationships with the general public. Right. So it can help your sales, it can, but you have to work cohesively as public relations departments and mm -hmm. marketing departments right. doing what's within your lane. You mm -hmm. know? I feel like the reason like this myth is even accurate, like not accurate, but it's around now is because a lot of companies put those two departments together mm -hmm. on They'll have, you know, a department, of marketing department, but under the marketing department, there'll be a PR practitioner or vice versa. You know, so there's not two different departments in a lot of companies because, as we said, there's a lot of different branches and a lot of people or a lot of companies want to save money. So they'll, you know, hire someone that can do both. Definitely. Where that becomes, you know, the line between public relations and marketing gets a little blurred. So, I mean... It's just public relations is public relations and marketing is marketing. Yeah, and, and I, <laughs> I feel like to say, like I said, like you know how they try to box in public relations. Mm -hmm. Marketing is much more specific. 
you know, their terms are very ordered. Um, and PR deals with so much more of the unknown. Right. You know, we deal with the unknown so that their opportunity to act and build and expand what brand we're working with can be ordered. Right. You know? We don't boost their sales. We provide a platform for them to grow. And you have a little background in marketing? I did. I, um, I actually, at my last university, I teeter tottered between um, the business field of marketing and um, public relations, but I owned them on it before I came here. That was my passion. So I definitely work with the two. Um, it's a lot more number crunching on the marketing Ooh. side. I'm going to stick that to the math people because. You know, I'm not, I know a lot of public relations practitioners who do, you know, the right end and then they'll just find somebody to crunch the numbers. A lot of public relations practitioners don't want to deal with numbers. Yeah, um, that, that seems to be pretty common these days. Um, the curriculum show within our university right. that you'll deal a lot more with numbers in marketing, marketing. versus your public relations. So, I think that would be maybe effective relationship building, seeking out that person to crush those numbers. Um, and maybe they can learn from one another, you know? That's maybe. the opportunity that that PR person should be taking. Right. And with relationships, our next segment is about relationships with journalists. So, I'm happy you brought that up. I'm going to people to, you know, Stay tuned and come back for that segment. But with the myths, I think we, you know, covered a few of the myths. Um, there will be links to other myths and the answers to those myths in the description. So look out for that. And I would like to thank you for coming thank and you. you know speaking with me to speak to the people about public relations and public relations myths. Yes. Again, thank you for watching PR and Vision, and I am Lonnie J. Hi, viewers. Welcome back to PR and Vision. I am Lonnie J, and today's segment is entitled Hey Best Friend, where we will discuss the relationship between publicists and journalists. My guest for right now is India Lee. India, how about you tell us a bit about yourself? Hello, well, my name is India Lee, and I'm currently a first semester senior at Delaware State University. I'm studying mass communications with a concentration in convergence journalism. Um, I'm currently the campus news editor for the newspaper, and starting next semester, I will be editor in chief. Yay for accomplishments! I like accomplishments. Okay, so you are you work with learning. Yes. And um, my thing is, I just want you know to ask you, how do you? define the relationship between, you know, a publicist and a journalist? Well, um, I don't think there's a clear definition between the relationship because public relations is definitely a part of journalism. Right. So, um, like, when we receive stories or um, pitches from Carlos Holmes, mm -hmm. we receive those in press releases, which okay. are created by publicists. Right. So we use that to produce news, and um, I feel like the publicists try their best to get out the correct news, mm -hmm. um, and we do our best to convey that message into um, like journalism, into our publication and stuff like that. Right. All right. So with me being, you know, public relations concentration, um, I would like, you know, the classroom we learn a lot about, you know, how the appropriate way to, you know, get your story, in you know the news or you know you gotta make it newsworthy and it's the whole a lot of guidelines, you know. But like the the first thing that we learn as public relations practitioners is that journalists are your friends. You have to be friend and journalists. Like if you don't do anything, your friend should consist of a bunch of journalists, a bunch of bloggers because they make the stories happen. Mm -hmm. Um so with the press releases, I done scripted your press releases and my professors they will tear them up you know because mm -hmm. it has to be done the right way because you want it you don't want your story to be well the story that you want to tell you don't want that to be shifted the wrong way mm -hmm. so 
Yeah, I, I don't, I don't. I'm like you, there's no clear definition. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of um, journalists that turn publicists and yeah. vice versa. So it's like, it's really, you know, they're really close. Like, yeah, they have to have a close relationship because the only way that people find out about things uh, that are outside of their familiar area mm -hmm. is through news. Right. So if you are representing someone or a company and you need their image to be withheld mm -hmm. and upheld in a, like, in a good light, right. then you have to know journalists and you have to know a way to get positive positive information about them out there. So they ha you have to be close and you basically work with them. Now. Sometimes we do the same job. So. Exactly. So, hence the segment, hey best friend, you have to really be like, you have to have your go-to journalist. Like as a public, you have to have your go-to journalist so that you can get your story out there and you know it's going to get out there mm -hmm. if you know you have that relationship with yes. that person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, how do you feel both parties benefit from you know working together? I feel like both parties, both publicists and journalists, they benefit because they can put out accurate information. Right. Um, like news, it's great to be the first to break something. Mm -hmm. It's great to have everything that anybody can ever want to read on your website. Right. But if it doesn't make sense or if it isn't true, then there's no point. So I feel like publicists, they benefit from like giving their clients a great image mm -hmm. um, you know, and practicing with uh, upholding the uh, image of the company and right. stuff like that. And then journalists, they know that they're putting out the correct information. And if they, if a journalist knows a bunch of PR people, they get more stories and more, you know, accreditation. Right. Like their, their stuff is out there more. So they become the more popular journalists. So okay. I feel like they benefit both ways. Yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's no like negatives of like having a relationship for, like with a publicist if you're a journalist or with a journalist if you're a publicist because if it's the correct relationship, you know, as a publicist, your client will get out there in the way that you want them to. And as a journalist, like you said, they'll have, you know, the more, they'll be the more popular journalist. Um, but then there comes time where you don't want to, you know, make enemies with, you know, the wrong, the person on the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. So like, if even if you send a press release or a, um, a media um, a media you know kit you know to a journalist, it's like if you did something wrong to them, they're gonna take your information, they're gonna put it out there. They might put not put it out there the in the way. correct way because you didn't burn your bridges. So mm -hmm. I think that's another a thing that um, you know publicists and journalists have to be careful of is to not you know, make a relationship in a bad way mm -hmm. and to not burn bridges. Um, um, have you had any experiences with, you know, public relations practitioners or, you know, if so, how were they, like, how do you feel about those experiences? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> right before I came to college, I was doing an internship back home where I worked for, um, I worked for a woman who worked for the Philly Sunday Sun and as well as DJ Damage. Mm -hmm. So I, she sent me um, press releases or she would tell me to write a press release about something. And I wrote this one press release about this author in Philly who was uh, having a, a launch party mm -hmm. for his book, or book release party. And it was a, he said it was great. And I had never written a press release before. But she had also, she made me and one other intern find a list of a hundred tips. Like we had to come up with an Excel document mm -hmm. for a hundred tips for PR, mm -hmm. like excellence. And so I learned a lot, like looking up a whole bunch of stuff about PR, like every week. Right. So I was able to gain insight into that and the correct way to write a pr press release, the correct way to present an event and to um, publicize it and promote it as well, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do those things every day. Yeah. <laughs> Lord Jesus. <laughs> but, um, you have anything else you want to, you know, comment about journalists, publicists, relationship, you know? Well, I feel like their bond has to be close. So, um, a relationship with a publicist for me is just as important as a relationship with another journalist yes. or an editor that can get me into like a big name magazine or something. You have to have good relationships with publicists so that you can actually have information. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you, viewers, for listening. Again, you are watching PR Vision with Bonnie J. Welcome back to PR Vision. I am Lonnie J, and today's segment is entitled Don't Post That, Enhancing Your Social Media. I have two guests today, Caprice King and Eric Donaldson. Can y'all tell me a little bit about yourself, starting with Caprice? Well, my name is Caprice King. I'm a public relations manager here at Delaware State, and currently I intern for Cage 2 Public Relations. And I'm Eric Donaldson, also a public relations uh, student here at Delaware State University, graduating soon. Minoring in marketing, and um, I transferred, so it's been a learning experience. Thank y'all for coming today. Thank you for having us. And so, like I said, we'll be talking about social media and you know how to enhance your social media. And basically, we're really going to be touching on branding. So, we all know there are a lot of social media platforms, but we're going to get to them. The top six. So we all know the first, the biggest social media platform Facebook. is Facebook. Um, Facebook has been around for a long time. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how far back it goes, but almost every business has a social media, a, a Facebook page. Um, and even like all demographics, I believe, have like Facebook. So. My mom has a Facebook. My grandma has a Facebook. So it's like everyone should. Right. You if you don't have a Facebook, you know, you just like under a rock somewhere. I know like our generation really don't like to be on Facebook. But for real, I go there and talk to my aunts and it's you know, very effective, and, but definitely with the, the older gener generations um, before us. Right. Um, I didn't think that that would go like that. I bet uh, Especially seeing the trend with our generation and the social media platform we used over time, um, we're very on and off. Mm -hmm. And that's lasted and it's moved through generations, which is, I think, made it the most effective tool overall for right. definitely marketing uh, and doing any type of public relations with a business. Any brand name. Everyone's going to see it. Right. And it pops not, up when you Google. You know, someone's going to say, did you see this? <laughs> Your aunt's going to come say, did you see this? And this is. This I've seen is so many different things that I've never searched for myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of things now the way social, uh, the way Facebook is set up, everything like just comes on your feed. Like, so, yeah. so, next platform. Definitely. Arguably, Twitter? arguably Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> so yeah. Twitter came around right after Facebook. Mm -hmm. And you know, we kind of left a generation behind <laughs> on the Twitter wave, but um, definitely that's not so user friendly to the to, the, to the, a different demographic than us, <laughs> you know, a different target audience. But I think like a lot of people like Twitter because it's like since you only have um, 140 characters, it's like short and to the point. Mm -hmm. So like you get the information that you want to get without you having to read like. A bunch of information right and then also now it makes it easier for different platforms such as vine to you know do certain things like a lot of people brand themselves as comedians now using vine so now you can post your vine video on your twitter and take people to your vine mm -hmm. so it's just like it creates different ways now to yeah. link to other platforms they like all connect like you can get your Instagram pic like Instagram information sent straight to your Twitter as yeah. soon as you post it. Same with Facebook. So it's like um, you can basically reach more people the way like all the social platforms connect. And it's very effective, especially starting with the, the Twitter base, because I realized that um, that came on a lot with Twitter, like linking everything on mm -hmm. um, your Twitter. And it was because of those 160 characters. People are much more appreciative now of short blurbs, very informative, right. something a link you can put up and click on and maybe get more information, but something quick to draw you in, maybe with a picture. It's it's much more effective now um, and a lot quicker. It's every businesses that work in the now should be on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna, people, your timeline is always gonna be open. So, you know. Listen, I have to refresh my timeline like 
a lot in like one minute. Like, it's like, where, where did this all come from? But the next platform, which I know we're all pretty into, is Instagram. Yes. Um, oh, that's new social media app. And it's like, not, it's literally not even new, but it's still new. Like, it's still revamping itself. So I, I think that's what makes Definitely Instagram. one of the youngest. Yeah, it's one of the youngest, but it, it keeps. It's so current. Right. And it, it, it has paved the way for many um, boutique owners, um, for many um, the hair industry, um, even rappers, you know? So it. it we're a very visually receptive society. Right. You know, if you can paint a picture for us, we're going to see that picture much quicker than we see, see whatever words. you write underneath mm -hmm. of it. And we'll make our own decisions about how we feel about it. Right. But so. if we can offer something appealing to multiple different uh, mm -hmm. demographics or audiences, you can't help but win as a business on Instagram. People like looking to see what you're doing. Mm hmm. And I think um, a good thing about branding and like marketing yourself on Instagram now is that the people who you follow now can help you see things that they like, if that makes any sense. Um, your explore page now is yeah. based on what the people that you follow uh, and like. And the things you like, like. Right. So it's like, okay, I'm following, say I'm following Caprice and I'm following Eric. We're both PM majors, so Caprice and Eric like this picture. Oh, it's about an internship. It's going to show up on my Explore page, and now I can go and look at this internship. So I, th I just think that um, the people behind the platforms know what they're doing, and it also helps, you know, people brand themselves better. And it's really like you have to know how to use the platforms to effectively brand yourself. But we'll talk about that <laughs> later. <laughs> um, the next, the next platform we're going to get to um, is the professional platform. LinkedIn. Yes. Um, a lot of people, I know me coming into college, um, I didn't have a LinkedIn. I didn't. I um, but, you know, career services or professors, Turn you know, around. they were like on us. You need a LinkedIn, you need a LinkedIn. And now I kind of see why. You know, it's a more, it's like a more professional Facebook. Um, you get people to endorse you on what they know you can do. Um, different People in different industries are on there. People in your industry are there. So it's a good way to network. Um, I'm not sure. How do you feel about LinkedIn? I personally love LinkedIn from a market yourself standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, the endorsement of skills from people you've worked with um, in the past or currently. It's great that someone can sign off on your skills, especially if they hold some notoriety themselves. Your friends join in LinkedIn, that's great. You know, you always want to stay in good professional contacts with them. But it's really an opportunity to grow mm -hmm. personally, your brand, your work ethic, your skills, show the world what you're about professionally. And that's what I, that's what I appreciate most about LinkedIn. It, it holds no room for the riffraff that comes with any other social media. Mm -hmm. Everything's... Right about business. business. Right. <laughs> I think one thing I like about um, LinkedIn is that, you know, a person can say they're good at something or they do something, but unless you know them, you don't know if they can or cannot. So, like, I can post on Instagram all day, you know, I'm the best press release writer or I'm a model, you know, but... Well, then you get to see it. Yeah, and then people who work with you get the endorsement. So it's like, okay, she says she, you know, is a social media guru, but so does X, Y, and Z, who works for this, that, and that company. So, you know, it gives people uh, a yes on you. Yeah. Backup is always good. Right. <laughs> you never go wrong with somebody backing you up. Um, our next platform we're going to get to is Pinterest. Um, Pinterest, for those who don't know, is a website where you can basically pin different things that you like to board and it can range from anything pictures to words you know it just lets you put all of your thoughts of one category into a certain spot if that you know makes sense 
Um, but yeah, I'm new with Pinterest. I am a Pinterest. Not quite, you know, with the Pinterest move, but everything, y'all. Well, I use my Pinterest for personal reasons, but sometimes I do look at companies on there. Mm -hmm. So, like, but most of the companies on Pinterest are, like, bigger companies. Right. So, it's, like, but they'll have stuff about, like, their new line that's coming up or mm -hmm. something like that. So, or articles about something in their in their company. So, it's good for bigger companies, but for personal branding, it's not really, like, you know, something that you use. Okay. So, like, a... Macy's will have, you know, a Pinterest. Like, here we have, mm -hmm. you know, new line. But, Lonnie J, it's not going to be that effective for mm -hmm. me branding myself. Okay, I understand. You understand a little bit more? I do. I haven't <laughs> had too much experience with the Pinterest. I definitely could see um, it being... Uh, a great avenue for smaller businesses, you know, mm -hmm. the craftier side of like, it seems that a lot of people that I know interact with Pinterest always are looking at a technical project, something pretty hands on, a DIY, I'm gonna learn something mm -hmm. new, and I'm gonna branch out and probably endorse maybe some materials that I can do this like you did. So um, I can see the benefits of it for definitely smaller businesses, larger businesses, of course, you just can't go wrong when you have your name out there um, and something people are pinning to their wall. A constant reminder, so I can see I can see the benefits, even though I don't personally use pictures. So, our next platform is Google Plus. I don't really use Google Plus. <laughs> I'm not even gonna sit here and fabricate, but. Yeah, I don't really use Google, Google Plus personally, mm -hmm. but, um, well, it's still, like, kind of new. New, but, right. Yeah, but my sister has used it, and um, I know that, like, it's good for companies. Like, you know, she has, like, people who, like, she works with on mm -hmm. there and stuff like that. So, I don't yeah. really know. Definitely <laughs> another one of those big business-friendly um, social media interfaces. Right. Um, it can see it pairing well with, like, your LinkedIn. 